Doubles Pickleball Strategy 108, Improve Your Lobbing Skills. In this video, I'm going to show you how to improve your lobbing skills and strategy, and I'm going to show you how to do a better job of fielding lobs. Why lob? The goal of the lob is to move your opponents off of their forward court positions and place them deep in the court, where you will then attempt to make them fault before they can recover to normal forward play. Indeed, it's an appealing strategy. Take them deep to an inferior court position and then hammer the ball at their feet until they fault. Unfortunately, things don't usually work out that way. For all skill levels from 3.5 to professional, when all four players on the court have equal playing skill levels, lobs are, on average, a losing proposition. At the pro level, lobs are used in only about 4% of rallies, and data from the Pro Pickleball Stats Facebook page currently shows that lobs more often cause the loss of a rally than a win. Lob outcomes can go into three categories. First, the lob leads clearly to a loss of the rally by either going out of bounds or by being smashed back for a winner. Even at the pro level, lobs go out of bounds about 20% of the time. They get smashed back for a winner about 30% of the time. So on average, lobs clearly cause an immediate rally loss about 50% of the time. The second category is that the lobs lead to a win of the rally. This can happen if the lob can't be reached, if the overhead is botched, or if the team fielding the lob otherwise faults before getting back into normal forward play. This category accounts for about 20% of lob outcomes. The third category is that the lobs have no detectable consequence. In other words, the team fielding the lob does so successfully, eventually getting back into normal forward play. This category accounts for about 30% of lob outcomes. So for the data above, lobs are, on average, a losing proposition. Even in most recreational play where lob handling is rather weak, lobs are, on average, a losing proposition. But this is not the end of the story. In recreational play, we sometimes have big mismatches in skills and capabilities on the pickleball court at the same time. You might have skillful super lobber on one side of the court, and you might have low mobility Joe on the other side of the court. In some cases, you may even have a player who simply gives up when he sees a lob, making no attempt to return the lob. In such a case, about every lob that stays in bounds becomes a winner. Let's get on with the show. How do I get better with lobs? First, I'm going to talk about how to hit lobs from deep in the court, generally called defensive lobs. About the only time I'm going to use such a shot is if I'm in trouble, perhaps having to hit on the run, and I'm really deep in the court. If I can make the lob with my forehand, I'll try to add topspin. Topspin will help keep the ball in bounds, and it will cause the ball to kick deep. A great way to practice the topspin lob is with a gymnasium wall. Try to consistently hit a target about 12 feet high. You have to perfect this brushing stroke and groove it into muscle memory. A few practice sessions can help you acquire this very valuable shot. You can also practice with a partner on a court. Great target lines are shown here, where the ball path stays away from a right-handed opponent's forehand. A great time to use this lob is when your opponent is running forward. If you see that your shot is going to get past your opponent so that he is playing the shot after the bounce, get fully forward with your partner to form a wall opposite the ball location. Recreational players usually make the mistake of staying deep even when their lob succeeded in getting past their opponents. 
If your lob was weak and will be smashed, stay where you are and get low. Now let's talk about how to defend against defensive lobs. Most of the times you already know who the folks are who will lob frequently. So if such lobs are causing you a problem, direct the ball to the other opponent or to the lobber's backhand. So to shut down a third shot lobber, just return the serve to the lobber's partner or to the lobber's backhand. But let's say you've failed at this and you've provided a nice forehand setup for the lobber. If you watch closely, you can usually detect defensive lobs before the ball is hit. So as soon as you detect the low to high upward lobbing swing path, take a few steps back from the non-volley zone line so that you no longer need to worry about the lob getting past you. A big mistake is to be caught still running forward when the lobber hits his shot. If your partner is fielding the lob, advise him, it's good, it's out, or bounce it. This communication is essential. Don't let your partner attempt an overhead when your opponent's lob is headed out of bounds or may potentially land out of bounds. If the lob appears to be staying in bounds, yell it's good to allow your partner to execute an overhead shot rather than a shot after the bounce. Now let's talk about how to hit offensive lobs from the non-volley zone line. These shots are tough to execute because the window for success is tiny. Most offensive lobs that don't fly out of bounds can be smashed back if the defender takes a step or two back and then executes the overhead. This is me. I'm 64 years old, 40 pounds overweight, and I'm dealing with severe osteoarthritis in my left hip. My form is pretty terrible, but I can still cut off and smash back most offensive lobs that don't fly out of bounds. If I can do this, most of you guys should be able to also. It's just a matter of practice. Here are a couple of lobs that landed in bounds that I couldn't quite reach. Notice that these lobs are just barely in bounds. You can see how the lobber's window for success is small. All lobs landing in here can be smashed back if you take two steps back and execute an overhead. Of course, all lobs here are out of bounds. So let me repeat. Most offensive lobs that don't fly out of bounds can be smashed back if the defender takes a step or two back and then executes the overhead. Of course, players with good agility will run back and get the lobs that fall in this small window that cannot be cut off with an overhead. As you can see here, to get a winning record with offensive lobs, you are going to need extreme lobbing precision and an opponent who is not very capable in fielding lobs. A great way to train is with a practice partner. Most folks fail with a trajectory that is too flat. Instead, the trajectory needs to be very upward and rather high. Use disguise so that the shot starts out looking like a dink. So the paddle path needs to look like a dink, but with a more upward path and a long linear follow through. There's a topspin version of this shot shown here. As with the defensive lob, Use lob paths that stay away from the forehand. Find a partner and plan to do a lot of practicing. Ultimately, you need to determine your percentages. Specifically, what percent of your offensive lobs led to a rally win, what percentage led to a rally loss, and what percentage had no consequence on the rally outcome. Unless you've got great precision and a rather weak opponent, I doubt you will get a winning percentage. Now let's talk about how to field offensive lobs. First of all, you have to be vigilant and detect the lob style swing path. Watch here. A great player detects the lob style swing path and reacts before the ball is barely off the paddle face. 
Many new players are advised to never step backwards to prevent falling. However, better players will take a step or two back to ensure cutting off and smashing back the lob. If you can cut a lob off and return it with an overhead, the odds are that you will win the rally. If the lob goes past you and you play the lob after the bounce, the odds are that you will lose the rally. So get with your drilling partner and practice both issuing lobs and defending lobs. I understand that many seniors cannot run back to get lobs, so some folks simply give up if they see a lob. I urge you not to simply give up. Watch here. If you simply stand in place and extend your arm, you can still cut off most of the lobs that will land in your court. Any lobs getting past your paddle will still need to land in a rather small area of your court. Recreational players will have at least 30% of their lobs going out of bounds long. If you can cut off just 20% of the lobs, you can likely survive a recreational lobber. If you never plan to go back for a lob, let your partner know ahead of time. If you see that a lob is going to get past you that you can't get, quickly yell, yours. Lobs can be frustrating, but with a little practice, you should be able to make your opponent's lobs, on average, a losing proposition. Good luck, and thanks for watching.